I should make sure it's streaming first. Okay, we're streaming. We are live. So, one of the things I get asked uh, semi-frequently when I'm doing uh, these, these speedruns or tasks and whatnot, and given the fact that SGDQ is starting tomorrow, in fact, SGDQ is starting literally 23 hours and 58 minutes from now. So, get hoiped! Um, I figured I'd go ahead and do a video. I've actually been planning to do this for a little while, and I, I've kind of been putting together some ideas of exactly how I want to put this together. Um, so we're going to explain a couple of things, <clears throat> and hopefully you guys will enjoy. Uh, and if you won't, then, well, that sucks. Now, we're going to cover speedrunning first, because that's the easiest to explain. But I, I get two questions semi-frequently, like I said. Why do you speedrun? I get that question all the time. You know, I, I have so many so many players, so many viewers on my channel say, I, I can't possibly understand why you enjoy speedrunning. Why do you speedrun? So we're going to be talking about that. And then we're going to be showing you literally and personally what a TAS is. We're going to help make a TAS, actually, and then we're going to show you the results of it. And I figure that's probably one of the best ways to explain rather than trying to use words. I've actually heard uh, and seen a lot of people over time trying to explain what TASing is. And it's funny because this question comes up all over the place uh, it, at the actual GDQs themselves. You know, every now and again, it's like, well, we should explain what a TAS is. And, and like, one out of ten times, they actually successfully explain what a TAS is. The other nine times, they're like, well, you use tools and you play games and you, you do stuff with frames you know it's they never actually explain it so we're going to be explaining what tassing is from the perspective of the tasser and a few other things but we're going to save that for later because that's going to be more in-depth discussion why don't we talk about speed running first now we're going to go through Mega Man X1 because I know this game decently well I'd say I'm like a bronze level uh, player at this one let's make sure our controller's working controller's working good so Speedrunning is, is exactly what it sounds like, uh, although ironically, um, there are usually limitations when it comes to speedrunning. Oh, here. So, let me, let me demonstrate a couple things. First of all, most of us, uh, you notice over there on the, on the left, I guess it is, on your screen. Um, what the heck? Hang on. <laughs> Got some weird stuff going on with the green screen there. There we go. Um, here, let's, let's pause that for a second. So you notice uh, we've got the timer over there. Now, uh, I get a lot of people uh, questioning, you know, what the heck is with that, and I'm glad you liked it, Zed. Um, by the way, we will be taking questions with regards to speedruns or TASs, but for once, I'm not going to answer any other questions. I'm going to try and stay on topic, so just a heads up. So anybody wants to ask questions about speedrunning or TASs, feel free. So we got the timer, right? Now, I've actually had a lot of people ask me, well, like 10 people ask me, what's up with the timer? You know, why don't you just, how does that work? Uh, why do you use this specific method, etc.? There's basically two methods of timing a game for speedruns, in-game time and real time. Um, the, there's, uh, it really boils down to the community and, uh, you know, whoever, want, what you guys want to do, but I personally prefer real time. It's a lot easier to keep track of, and it's a lot more indicative, and it's usually a lot more precise as well. Um, the difference, if you're wondering, like, I'll use Super Metroid as an example. Let's say I'm playing Super Metroid and I pick up an item. The in-game clock actually stops while I get that item. You know how the game freezes when you get that item? And it's like... While it's doing that, the in-game clock is stopped. So your time in game time in Super Metroid is actually going to be lower than it would be real time. And so there is a, there is a distinct difference between the two. Because in most games, real time... Uh, <clears throat> real time is literal, you know, it's, it's how, how it's actually playing in, in reality, and in, in game time, most in-game clocks uh, go differently. Now, uh, like I just described, now there's something else over there, uh, we call them sectors, some people call them sections, some people call them segments, uh, some called people just call them splits. Uh, I usually prefer to call those splits myself, but... Uh, Excuse me. The splits over there are... It's a good way to keep track of what we're doing and how well we're doing. Like, for example, you could just say, well, why not just have you know, a stopwatch, hit go, play the game, and then hit stop when it's done. And that would tell, because that's the time that really matters, right? My 34 minutes and one second there is the time I actually post or say, yeah, you know, I got a new personal best. Yeah, I beat 34 minutes, you know, something like that. Why do we keep track of the splits? Well, that helps us to get better. The idea is not just to run the game once and then be done with it. The idea is to keep running the game and get better at it. Um, one of the sports equivalents I tend to liken this unto is golf. You know, you're playing the course, not the other players, right? Uh, there is, of course, competition, though, which, it, which still actually uh, fits the golf analogy, really. Um, I usually prefer friendly competition. I have seen, uh, actually, over the last few years, it's become a lot less... 
uh, unfriendly competition, and I've seen a lot more friendly competitions. That's actually really awesome. But, you know, for example, I, I got a bunch of my other viewers to play Mega Man 2 alongside me. And so we were, you know, oh, I got this time, well, I got this time, you know. We're not really trying to beat each other per se. It's more like additional enjoyment in, in, in the competition of trying to, to beat our own times, right? Does that make any sense? Um, so, but, but again, this boils into why we use splits. A split shows how well we're doing at that section. I'll, I'll demonstrate in a minute, because I'm going to play at least a couple of stages here to demonstrate. But if I, when I beat Vial there, I'll hit a timer that'll, that'll hit the split, and I can look up and see, well, I'm five seconds behind where I was for that stage. Or if I do really well, you know, if I do poorly in three stages but do really well in the fourth stage, I can tell I need to shore up those first three stages. I need to practice them more, but I'm doing really well at the fourth stage, and so that's where I can gain some time back, you know? It's all about trying to figure out where exactly you can actually improve your time, improve your, improve your run. But I haven't answered the, the really, the biggest question I always get about speedrunning. All this is just explanation. Um, the biggest question I get about speedrunning very, very commonly is why? Why do you speedrun? Now, the obvious answer is because it's fun, but that's not really an answer. So let, let me go ahead and hit go here. Three, two, one. Uh, hang on. Three, two, one. Go. There we go. The best way I can explain why I enjoy speedrunning, and I can't speak for everyone else on this, but it's all about a, a degree of replayability and pushing yourself. Speedrunning is actually a form of challenge run. And a surprisingly large amount of players tend to, uh, to, to understand challenge runs more than speedruns, which I find funny, because again, a speedrun is a challenge run, right? A speedrun is, I want to beat this game as quickly as possible with certain restrictions. And there are certain types of speedruns and categories of speedruns, you know, uh, they actually vary quite a bit, really. But it's it's not just the replayability, it's it's the... There's an enjoyment in improving your time, in the, in the competition of it. Not just, again, with other people, but with yourself. The idea of, I can, well, I thought I'd do a little, little bit better. There we go. Perfect, that's almost flawless. Um, if I do a little bit better, then, you know, I can improve my time. And there's that enjoyment of it. It's, it's the same exact thing in so many different things. But there's one other thing in particular. I, I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. I'm talking too fast. <laughs> I'm speedrunning my, my explanation here. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, I didn't have the... Okay, so we're, that's okay. So this is a good time to talk about uh, what a reset is, which is uh, that. Okay, so yeah, we're actually going to reset the game because uh, this will actually tie into another topic in a moment. Uh, we're going to reset the game because we died. Um, certain speedruns, uh, even when you're at a competitive level, can accept deaths. Uh, most of the runs I'm currently in, if I die, the run's over because a death is just going to be such a huge time loss that it's no longer worth trying for, right? Uh, the only reason I would keep going is if it was for practice. That's a shame, I was doing really well on the bees. Um, so... I'm trying to think how best to explain this. One of the most enjoyable aspects of it is, for me, is each layer of speedrunning is still enjoyable for me. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, let me, let me try and explain in my own terrible way here. When you first start speedrunning a game, you're basically just playing the game and trying to optimize your play. You may be trying out tricks, you may be routing. Uh, some games don't actually allow for routing, so it's not every game is going to actually involve that. There we go. But for example, anybody who watched my Final Fantasy VI Kefka race knows that I spent a huge amount of time just trying to figure out the best possible route to get through that as quickly as possible. You know, it's like, okay, well, if I optimize... And it's like, for example, if I pick up an item early on, I will lose time early on, but if that item gives me an edge for the rest of the run, I may net gain, or rather, you know, net... Ugh, net, uh, net... Have, have a quicker time, right? So that's what routing is all about, and it's a very complicated, very convoluted process of basically planning out your strategy, and it's one of the things I enjoy most uh, about about speedrunning. In fact, even this game right here actually has a lot of uh, routing to it when it comes to the way I run this game, especially for uh, the 100% category I was doing, because the order in which you do the bosses is very relevant, and you have to do it in as efficient a manner as possible because you want to have as few going back to restages to stages as possible. In fact, my uh, my old run, the one where I got the 59 uh, sub hour, the whole point of that was it was a it was a run where I only went back to a stage once, Chill Penguin. 
Uh, everything else I managed to get on the fly, and the whole point of figuring out that route was to ensure that that happened. So that's the routing side of things. So I enjoy the routing. I enjoy thinking about the game. I enjoy analyzing the game. I enjoy picking the game apart. That should probably shouldn't surprise anybody who's been on my channel for any longer than a minute. Um, so routing's enjoyable. Then once you do it, you just start playing the game. This is kind of important. When you start actually playing the game, it's really important. I get this question all the time. You know, what, how do you tell which games to speedrun? I'm going to get into speedrunning and which games should I be playing. And the answer is always a game you love. Time. Okay, so you see, I'm seven seconds under. This, I was going to demonstrate here. Seven seconds under. So uh, I'm actually doing better than normal, uh, than, than my old time over there. So that's pretty good. Um, and I can tell you why. It's because I actually did pretty well in both the B sections. Um, but, uh, so when you're just playing the game, it's a game you really enjoy, it's a game you love, it's a game you're not gonna get bored of. That is very important, because it's very, very easy to actually get bored, uh, with, with a speedrun, because you're gonna be playing, the, if you're really gonna be speedrunning a game, you're probably gonna be playing it over and over and over and over and over. Again, I use Mega Man 2 as the example, anybody who was watching my stream for a while though knew I was just pushing that, that speedrun over and over and over, and I was playing it just, you know, several times a week, um, which isn't even that severe, that's like, that's casual speedrunning, basically, but still, you have to not be bored of the game. Then you get to the next stage of speedrunning, when you've got, you, you've got the route planned out, you've, you've got, you've practiced the, the overall stages, you know exactly what you're doing, and you've practiced any tricks that are in your run, and so you know, you know methods of getting around enemies and all that fun stuff. You, and you've got it pretty deep down, now it's time to start bringing your time down. This, ta this part is also enjoyable for me, and it's hard to explain why for me, so I'm just going to try and uh, ask you guys out there, is there anything out there that you enjoy doing um, that is, I, I don't know how to put it, I'd say competitive, but the, the competition part isn't really the relevant point, if you know what I mean. It's more like, is there anything you, go you out there that you you're really, really feel you're good at, oh, almost pulled that off, and you like getting better at? Eh. I'm not explaining this very well, so let me let me try again here. The idea here is once you get to a certain level of, of competence at just about anything, and this is true not, not just for video games and speedruns, but like across the board, basically, you get to a point where, you know, you've, you've, you've made it several miles, you know, if you were to just, like, score your overall skill with whatever it is you're doing, whether it's, it's uh, uh, you know, racing or... Um, or because you're, uh, or, or, or you're exercising and you're trying to push yourself to get just a little bit further or whatever. You've, you basically, so if you were to score your overall skill, it's, a, it's several miles, right? You've gotten all this accomplished. Now you have to work out getting the, the feet, to use a really strange analogy, right? So once you have the miles worked out with the routing and the, and the skill uh, to actually play the game quickly in general, and to... Uh, and to know uh, all the tricks and whatnot, now you gotta actually precisely get all of those little... Ah, there we go. Um, you've gotta get the, know all the tricks to get those feet off. You know, you, you've accomplished the two mile mark, but two miles and 20 feet is where you wanna be. And eking out those 20 feet, that's hard. That's difficult, that's challenging. That means you really gotta push yourself, you really gotta micro, you really gotta do uh, what they usually call micro-optimizations. Uh, to use an example. Um, and so once you get to that point, you're really, you're, you're, you're just trying to think of every tiny little thing you can do to optimize your run, to try and just squeak out those few seconds. Like I was saying in my, uh, in my Final Fantasy VI Kefka race, once you reach the point uh, where you are, you know, you're trying to improve your run by minutes, you've officially, uh, you've officially started to reach that stage, basically. Oh, you bastard. Ah. But once you've, uh, but there's even there's technically a second step behind that too. It's when you've uh, gotten to the point where you're trying to optimize your run by seconds. Oh damn! I'm gonna keep going just to showcase something. Uh, so like trying to squeeze out those seconds, trying to squeeze your time down, that is very challenging and that is very fun. Trying to accomplish, uh, trying to accomplish that. So what I'm trying to say is every stage of the challenge, every stage of trying to. Uh, trying to uh, improve your run is enjoyable, or at least can be enjoyable. And as was pointed out, there's something to be said for the enjoyment in pushing yourself. Everyone understands that to some extent or another. It's basically antithesis, the antithesis of, uh, of laziness, as weird as that sounds. You know, the idea of trying to accomplish more than you think you can, to try and to accomplish, uh, you know, better. Now, okay, you see how my time just went red over there? That shows that I am now behind. There, right there. See? I just lost 6.8 seconds. 
Now this is this is just demonstrating how the timer thing works. So I did really well in the vile thing, but I died on Chill Penguin. If I hadn't died, you'd notice I'm only uh, 14 seconds behind, basically. So there's a pretty good chance that if I hadn't died, I would actually be pretty far ahead. So I know I need to shore up my strats with Penguin. I know I need to be uh, a little bit better, you know, so I can see where I've gone well and I've gone poorly. Um, and of course, when you get a new, as, as Deutsch just pointed out, when you get a personal best, when you accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do, you know, speedrunning, exercising, racing, um, drawing, you know, whatever it is you're interested in, when you actually accomplish it, it's just like, yes, you know, you feel amazing. And, and there's that accomplishment of it. Um, I, I've often said that this is one of the reasons RPGs have become so popular, because there is a sense of accomplishment in leveling. As long as leveling is done properly, you feel like you are, you are succeeding at something. You feel like you are getting better at something, because you usually are. That doesn't apply to like every RPG, but it, the concept is there regardless. So this is speedrunning uh, in a nutshell. Now... Speedrunning uh, is pretty easy to explain. Um, the difference between the difference between speedrunning and tassing um, is interesting because speedrunning is often described as performance art, whereas uh, tassing is described as something more like an engineering art. For example, if I was to paint a beautiful picture, you know, by hand and, and take my time and do it, that is a beautiful work of art I've created, right? But if I was to sit down and figure out the exact math and, and patterns and, and science and trying to figure out the, the, the physics of how exactly this new bridge we're going to build is, that is still art. And that is still beautiful. But you can see why the two are completely different, right? So let's show off tassing. Now, I do tassing with the keyboard, personally. I'm going to explain why uh, in just a moment. Let's go ahead and kill the timer there, because... Well, we're not actually uh, doing a, a, he a heater here, so we don't need the timer at all. We're going to go ahead and, yeah, go ahead and save that. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that entirely. And we're going to have to configure this over to the keyboard. Now, I prefer the keyboard because, all right, B A Y X. Let's select L R. I prefer the keyboard for tasking because most of the other things you're going to be doing are also on the keyboard. So, you know, and, and you don't really need to be playing like this. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So let's go ahead and reset this sucker. Um, now, okay. Tassing is done at the frame level. And the way this works is that what a task literally is, a, a actual, uh, the, the file that you're creating, the movie file, is a recording of inputs and frames. So at frame 43,816, you pressed up for one frame. And it records that. And so that's how it works. Now, this is actually extremely important for anybody out there who's actually interested in getting into uh, tassing. I don't know if you can see the menu here. Looks like you can't. If you're getting into tassing, you, there's an option here. Uh, there's a, Okay, let, let's rewind a bit. Thirsty Dog, um, there's two... There's really two types of tassing nowadays, okay? There's actually... A, I, have, I have a lot more to say about tassing than I do about speedrunning, so I hope you guys will bear with me here. Um... There's two types of tasking, manual tasking and programming tasking. Now, I'm going to show off manual tasking because that's what I prefer and that's what I enjoy. And uh, I have no interest in doing programming tasking. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, yes, you can, Omega Spruce. Uh, the only thing that is required for tasking is the ability to record at the frame level, uh, record the, the input at a frame level. It's all that's recorded. P people have done uh, PC game uh, tasks. People have done you know Wii game tasks. All that's required is the tools. And this is kind of cool. Back in the day, we, uh, Tassers, and I mean back in the day, we're talking like a while ago, back when Mario Brothers and Mario Brothers 3 were the only Tasses, um, nobody, like, like, we didn't have tools that were designed for Tassing, we had adapted other tools to Tassing, and that's, uh, kind of where manual Tassing came from, because it was all manual back in the, what, the day. Then they came out with Lua scripting, L-U-A scripting, which is where you can literally set up a, a, a program, basically, um, Oh, there's a huge difference, Black Salamander, but give me a moment, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate tasking live to showcase it. Um, so, uh, Lua scripting is something people would do. For example, let's say you're playing uh, a side-scroller shoot-em-up, and you could do a Lua script whose entire purpose is to, ex is to figure out exactly what frames enemies will show up on the screen at and what, uh, what specific pixels they'll be taking up. And you could do that, and so, like, from the Lua's perspective, you just see the hitboxes. You're not actually seeing the game, you're just seeing the hitboxes. And then you could program the tasks in order to just dodge around those hitboxes, and then when you actually play the game, it just... and it looks freaking amazing. But you didn't do that manually. You didn't figure it out. You, you wrote a program to do it for you. That's, and that's just become more and more of a thing. In the last few years, uh, tassing has become so much of a more big thing than it used to be that tassing is now, uh, has huge, huge support. There's actually 
new emulators, which are recent as of just a little over a year ago now, that have been created specifically and solely for tasking. Like, if you were to try and load one of these emulators and just to play a SNES game, it wouldn't actually work, right? It wouldn't actually function. You would, you'd be like, hey, um... How do I play the game? You know, because you can't. It was designed for tasking, not for emulating, right? I know that sounds like a weird distinction, but yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so nowadays, you know, that's what most people do. They they make programs and they make scripts and they make designs and and they basically write a program and the program then does, does, plays the game for them and then they record that and then they actually play it back and that's the actual task. That's not what I'm showing you. Okay, I'm showing you manual tasking, but. The thing I'm leading up to here is it is extremely important if you're going to do a task that you start it... Uh, where's this actual setting? Um, there's actually a, a specific setting for this here. Oh, that's why, because I need to be in record. There we go, right here. Record from reset. That is really, really important, and let me explain why. There's no such thing as random when it comes to video games. Uh, this is still true to this day. There, there's no such thing as random. Uh, what we call RNG is table-based. I don't want to explain this in full detail, but to, to give you like a really, 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 really basic example of what I'm talking about, let's say there's a table with 16 values in it, 16, you know, 1 through 16. And then, you know, this, and so uh, what's going to happen is everything that's random in the entire game, like, for example, if, if you're going to hit successfully hit something in an RPG, or if you're going to do, you know, more damage when you're actually hitting them or whatever, that, every time that happens, a, 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 uh, a, a call is sent to see, okay, what are we at on the table, and based on that table, we'll then determine what that actually is, okay? So, and, and uh, most games, the vast majority of games, you, uh, they do something, some kind of input on the player's behalf is what moves this table forward, a uh, good example, I'll use the, the example I know by heart. In Final Fantasy VIII, uh, there's a table of 256 that determines all the RNG. And while you're in, uh, while you're in combat, every time you hit the button uh, Y, I believe it is by default, or whatever that is, a square, I guess. Whenever you hit the bit button that switches party members, it advances the table by one step. So you can control exactly what that table is RNG-wise if you happen to have something that knows where it is. And therefore, this is how you can control RNG in a TAS. Now, <laughs> bit of a bit of an explanation here, really quick. The reason this is so important to to record from reset rather than now is because you need the RNG table to be exactly the same as when you recorded the task. If you don't record from reset, you have an extremely high chance of not having that. And if you don't understand why this is important, rem again, remember a task is just an, a a a, a, pro a a file basically that says at this frame hit this input, at this frame hit this input, and so. If your RNG is different and you hit up, but according to the RNG table, the enemy, when you when you recorded it, the enemy was over here. But because you didn't record from reset, the RNG table is different. So now the enemy is right in front of you, so you run into the enemy, and now you're off. Because now you the the you're just doing the inputs as if it was uh you know, as if as if everything was this way it was, but it isn't that way, and so now you're just randomly running around. It's called desyncing. So you have to record from reset. The, uh, but this is also another way in which uh, there's a huge difference between programming and manual tasking. It's one of the reasons why uh, so many people out there prefer uh, programming tasking, because you can control the RNG. Let me give you another exact explanation of what I mean by this. The very first Pokemon game, red and blue, green, eh, whatever, the, the first one on the Game Boy, there, the way the RNG tables were designed is you had a 1 in 256 chance to miss any attack. Even attacks that had a you know 100% hit rate, they could still miss. It was just ridiculously unlikely, right? When you can control the RNG table, you can make sure every enemy always misses you. But in order to control that table, you need tools to actually ha be watching that table. You need memory uh, scanners. You need you need the ability to interpret and extrapolate on what those values mean, so you can then control them, right? Now, it is possible to RNG manipulate manually. It's just much more tasking because you have to know exactly what is advancing the, 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 the memory table, and then you have to test it manually. I can demonstrate really quick, but basically in Earthbound, this is what, another one I know really well. Um, in Earthbound, if you're playing Earthbound, uh, you're, in the, you're in the combat, right? Every time you move the cursor in the menu in the combat, that's advancing the, the, the RNG table one step. That's how you advance it in Earthbound. So... Um, so it, you know, in a, in, for example, you can that is something that you can easily manually task. It just takes time. 
For example, let's say I want to get a smash attack on this guy. Well, in order to do that, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, let's try the attack. Well, it wasn't a smash. So you reload. I'll explain reloads in a moment. Um, you reload, and then it's like, okay, chunk. Uh, we push it down, push it up. So the, 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 the table has moved forward two steps. And we try it. Nope. Okay. So we move three steps. Nope. Four steps. There we go. There's our smash attack. But that could take a long time because you're doing it manually. You're not actually looking at the table. You can't. If you're, want, if you're programming it, you can look at the table and say, oh, well, I need 16 steps in order to make this a crit hit. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16. <laughs> Done. Um, but you might be like, well, why do I prefer manual tasking? Because manual tasking uh, is much more enjoyable for me overall. I feel like I'm actually playing the game more and learning the game more. I, I understand a lot of games so well because I have tasked them or done task work on them. Uh, task work is another thing entirely. I don't want to drop names on tasks I've done work for. But suffice it to say that it's, it's when someone posts like a work in progress, we call it a whip, a work in progress, and, uh, and, and they're like, I'm trying to figure out this thing, guys. And so plenty of people go to the task forums and they'll pull out that, that whip and be like, well, it looks like you need this. And so you can uh, pull apart the code. And tasking is a really great way to really rip apart games, reverse engineer them is what I like to think of that as. Um, but I've, I've explained a few terms here. Why don't we just go ahead and show you tasking here, okay? So we're going to need a couple of tools. Uh, we want input display and we want our frame counter. There we go. So... See in the upper left there, uh, that it, we are at a frame of 186. Now this is a SNES game. SNES games run at 60 frames a second because of course they do. So um, in order to actually uh, figure out, we, we need to keep keep that in mind at all times and be aware of that. Now uh, we actually don't need input display now that I think about it. So we're going to go ahead and get to the point. I can do all this manually without doing frame time because it's not necessary. Now let me explain right about here. Okay, so we're gonna set some save states, all five save states right here. Uh, not that I'm aware, record. PC games are a different animal. Well, I guess I should say yes, but PC games are a different animal to, to, to TAS. There's basically a program out there that records uh, computer input, but it's very, very weird and very finicky and very, very, very hard to do. So. Let me explain, uh, before we continue any forward and say hi to Aguiar, uh, what the goals are of tasking. Now, I explained in brief the goals of speedrunning, to go fast, right? And uh, the whole categorization thing is how the challenge comes in. For example, anyone who's watched me knows I do the eight bosses, no uh, buster only run in Mega Man 2. That's a challenge. That's a specific goal. But, so, but in speedruns, usually there's only two goals. There's your category, and then there's go fast, and that's it, right? Tasking's a little different. For anybody who's seen any of my tasks, as you know, that it's like a priority list, right? Now, the bottom here, the, pro the bottom of the priority list is always going to be go fast. Now, that may have seen, well, going fast is obviously the least important thing. Well, that's true, but the point is, no matter what you're doing, at the end, you're never going to go slow. You're always trying to optimize your time. You know, that, that's, that's the baseline, right? You're always trying to go quickly. Hey, Rickard. So, that's the bottom priority. Now... Opinions vary on this next point. There's actually been some politics in this when it comes to the tasking community, and I don't want to step on too many toes, but suffice it to say, what the top goal has varied based on individual, and there's nothing really wrong with that as long as you're not bashing other people for thinking differently than you. <clears throat> but um, for me, the top goal is always be entertaining. Be entertaining, go fast. These, these are the priority list, right? Now, there can or cannot be in things in the middle. I mean, sometimes it's just this. Be entertaining, go fast. Uh, but the point being, to be an entertaining run is more important than going fast. Uh, the most famous example I like to use of this is there was a task of a boy and his blob on the NES, which was ridiculously boring to watch. It was very fast. It was the fastest run for that game. But, oh, God, it was boring because he, he did a bug which basically despawned, like, everything. And so the run was literally him running to the end, and, and then he won. And it was incredibly dull to watch. That's not entertaining, right? Now, in the last couple of years, uh, more people in the community seem to be thinking similarly to, to how I think, that entertainment should be the top goal, rather than speed should be the top goal. And so nowadays, there's been a bit of a compromise. If you go, if you go to taskvideos.org right now, that's the site for tasking uh, here in the States and in the West in general. There's actually a separate site for the Japanese uh, people, which I don't know off the top of my head. 
Um, top goal for the CT task was be entertaining. Although I guess you mean other than that. In which case it was Chrono at level 1 and everyone else at minimum level at Gear to have the minimum possible experience uh, and still beat the game while having Chrono in the party. All of that was part of one, one rule set. Chrono had to be in the party at all times that was available. Chrono never had to go past level 1 and everyone else had to be minimum possible X. So it was a low level run combined with the level 1 thing. So... Um, so you go to taskvideos.org and you look up like Super Mario Bros. 2 is a good example because that's been an extremely competitive task for, for many, many, many years. And there's the just, here's the fastest task run, and that, that's usually referred to as any percent. Any percent is, a, is the term for all other bets are off. We're just trying to go as quickly as possible. All other bets are off. Yes, I did, Jango. Um, no questions unrelated, Jango. Um, trying to stay on topic here. So, so that's that's any percent. You know, it's just go as quickly as possible. But then there's go as quickly as possible with Peach. Go as quickly as possible without using warps. You know, go as quickly as possible just using Toad. Go as quickly as possible. You know, blah 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 blah. So lots of different uh, categories arose to emphasize the more entertaining aspect of things and to let people new do tasks that where they wanted to have fun with it and make it enjoyable rather than just going as quickly as possible. Now, uh, with Mega Man X here, I think we're gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and set some some some. Uh, priorities for our for our goals here. Obviously, be entertaining and and speed, right? But Mega Man X, you can't really do much with this, and I'm only going to do like the first stage here or so. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and just have precision? This is actually a favorite of mine when it comes to tasking. I did this on uh, on Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Actually, for anybody who saw that task, that's available on my YouTube if you haven't seen it. Um, the the precision idea is. We want to make it look like X is actually this superhero fighting computer robot thing. So, like, for example, we're going to have to figure out, and I'll demonstrate this, we're going to have to figure out the exact frame at which we start shooting to attack enemies we can't see yet, because when the, built, the, the shots have reached the end of the screen, the enemy is going to spawn, and then we can hit them. So it looks like he knew they were coming and had calculated the exact moment to attack them. So it's going to look much more precise. Now, this is part of the entertaining aspect, because, of course, entertaining is the top priority. So, you know, entertainment... Precision, speed. I think the three goals are good for just showing off this one here. Um, there's no, th there's no such thing as an untassable game, to my knowledge, Black Salamander. Uh, I have shown off a task that is literally, uh, uh, like I think, three seconds long. I'm not even kidding. There is actually uh, such a thing. <laughs> But there are also ridiculously complicated tasks. And to use an example to answer Black Salmoner's question, Secret of Mana, believe it or not, was a game that went untasked, or rather did not have a completed task, for years. Years! Because Secret of Mana was such a convoluted game and was, not to put too fine of a point on it, extremely buggy. We, I, I say we, I was part of the, 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 the whip on that for a while and then I let it fall because it just kept going. And I wanted to do my own Secret of Mana run. But we, we had been looking at it, and it just we kept finding new ways to redo everything. Now, this is kind of interesting. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Let's say that we're doing the Secret of Mana run, like I just talked about. And, and so we get like an hour or so of live time. Uh, live time is what I call when the, game, when, the, when the movie's actually playing. So that's like you know months of, of real time. So you get like a month, or excuse me, an hour live time into the run, and then suddenly we realize, oh my god, we found this way to ensure that these certain attacks always move here, and we could, we could use this in order to attack this thing, which will allow us to start skipping whole sections. And that's going to save like 13 minutes on the run. Well, that has to be done back here. Now, the way a task works... You can't just, this isn't like a normal recording, like if you're editing. You can't just go in, edit this, and then leave the rest of it. In order to, in order to do this, we basically have to revert back to this stage, which I'll showcase in a moment, and then redo everything after this, you know? So, for example, on my Chrono Trigger task, which is very unoptimized, and I know this, there are a few things I could go back to fix and, 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 and repair and, make, uh, and repair those mistakes, but in order to do that, I have to do the whole run all over again. Because every, remember, it's just frames. And now the frames are off because I've, I've chopped off like two minutes of frames. So now I have to redo all the frames and redo it all manually. And the RNG is in a different spot in, uh, in everything, right? So Secret of Mana went untasked for years because they just kept discovering stuff. And so the, the run just kind of kept going back. To, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Cody, that was, uh, uh, King's Quest, I think? Shoot, you're gonna make me look it up here, hang on. I have it saved somewhere, so I can show it off every now and again. What was the name of that super fast ass? Uh, no, not Kirby All-Stars. <laughs> That'd be funny, though, wouldn't it? Uh, uh whatever, I'll, I'll answer the question in a minute, Cody, because it's, it's loading. 
So let's okay. So let's demonstrate what I mean by save states. Okay, uh, I mentioned going back. Let, let's actually demonstrate what that means. Most of you probably know what save states mean at this point in time, but the importance of save states to a task cannot be overstated. For example, let's say I'm going along and I discover if I jump while that red red truck is going by, I can actually save time. This is not true, but let's say I discover that. So I can go back to this point in time here. And we can jump over it. Just like that. It looks like we're going right over it. Yeah, see? That wasn't actually very precise. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. So why don't we pull a safety frame? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to jump on the ninth frame. That was too late. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eighth frame. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh frame. Nope. One, two, three, four, five, sixth frame. There we go. Now it looks like we literally just jumped over the car, right? And so now we set a new save state over here. Now, um... And so that, that's how, that's how that's, those are called reloads. Now, whenever you're recording a task, uh, you, you, basically every program that does task emulation records your reloads. It's like a score count kind of a thing. Um, and it's usually there to demonstrate how much effort and work put into a run. For example, there are runs out there that have like 20 records, re-records, which is ridiculous. Um, most of my runs uh, have closer to like a few thousand. In other words, every time I hit that reload button, that ad, that that increases that by one. It's generally there to indicate how many, how much work you had to put into uh, into fixing your run, into being as precise as possible, right? Um. So, uh, and, and there are runs out there that have just a ridiculously huge amount of reloads. So we're gonna go ahead and go forward a little bit more. Okay, so there's the enemy right there. We're at frame one, two, five, three. So let's go back to. Oh, actually, let's set up a save here. There we go. Jump over the thing again. All right, now we're going to set up a couple of save states here because we want some backups. Now, we know we know the frame that thing's going to show up. It's actually not 1, 2, 5, 3. It's probably right there. 1, 2, 5, 0. You can see it on the, on the far right there. So 1, 2, 5, 0, that thing's going to be there. So we need to have fired before then. So we're going to just guess randomly at frame 1, 2, 2, 0. We're just going to shoot. Nope. See, that was too... Oh, no, we did hit it. Did you hear that? We actually heard it. Okay, so we have successfully hit the enemy at 1, 2... Uh, one, two, two, zero, but that's not good enough because now we have to make sure we can't just, this is, again, we're trying to be precise and that's what a task is about. So we're not just going to say, oh, it's good enough. We're going to try and get it as precise as we can. So we're going to try and push the limit. So instead, we're going to do that one frame earlier, one, two, one, nine, and see if that hits it. Nope. See now I, by sheer happenstance, I guess the exact frame, I'm, I'm actually pretty experienced at tasking, so I've, after a while you get used to some uh, timing and stuff, but I, I guess the exact frame we need in order to hit this thing as quickly as possible. So why don't we go ahead and get up to that frame. Now this is important. Um, with very few exceptions, uh, games cannot accept input. Let me explain what I mean by this. If you want to do something as rapidly as possible, you're generally going to do it every other frame. Why? Well, think about it. If you hit attack every frame, then all you're doing is holding the button down, right? So that's not really going to be doing rapid fire. That's just going to be like, you know, just, just one swing, right? Or one shot. So, you know, in other words, the, le the fastest it is possible to do most actions repetitively is every other frame. Button, off button, button, off button, button. Make sense? So we're going to go ahead and set up a secondary save there. And we're going to keep holding right. We always got to keep holding right because, you know, we got to go, got to go fast. So one, two, three. Now, we can only shoot three shots at a time here, but, hey, to fire. So you notice, okay, so we didn't need the additional shots, but he's going to show up close to that frame. So, so we're not going to do any additional shots because those shots are actually going to blow him up before he even reaches the screen, basically. So we're going to set up a secondary save here. And now we got to do basically the same kind of thing. Uh, 
Okay. 1314 is when that sucker's gonna show up. Uh, if I had been smart, and I should have been, I would have tracked how long it takes for my shots to cross the screen. So I could write down, you know, it takes 30, 33 frames for the shots to cross the screen. And then I could just plug that in in the future, uh, which I really should have done. In fact, I'll do that in a moment here. So uh, we'll figure out, uh, let's just eyeball it again on frame 1290. Okay, so that was, that was good. Uh, let's go with... Uh, one, two, eight, five. Now let's see what that does. Nope. Okay. One, two, eight, eight. Hmm. Let's try one, two, eight, seven. Yeah, okay, so... So you hear, okay, one, two, eight, seven is our optimal spot. So we're gonna go ahead and put this. One, two, three, there's our rapid fire. Oh, shoot, I did it wrong. One, two, three. Now, we we did that at frame uh, one, two, eight, seven, right? The frame they hit is that frame right there. Uh, so that is, off the top of my head, 29. 29 frames. I was close. It takes 29 frames for our shots to, to cross the screen. I'm going to write that down somewhere. Ugh. I bet some people out there are like, this is so boring. Um, I like this, but again, this is the same thing. Like, I used that analogy earlier of engineering. You know, making a, a, making a bridge and all the math and design that goes into it. That really is what tasking is when you get down to it. Um, so... Uh, so so it, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that certain people just aren't going to be interested in, but other people are going to be very interested in, you know, just like in stru uh, structural or architectural engineering. Uh, I happen to love tasking, and I uh, really wish I had more time to do it, if I'm being honest. Okay, so now we're going to set up another save over here. You notice I keep using different save slots. Uh, you, you don't really have a limit. You have basically 10 save slots to work with, and you want to always spread those out because you always want to make sure... If you screw up, or if you realize you've screwed up, you want to be able to go back further. Like, let's say, here's, here's a chunk of video. And you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you've got a save slot here, and a save slot here, and a save slot here. And you, you go forward, and you make a mistake, but you realize that you could have fixed this mistake back here. You don't want to reload this save, you want to reload this save. And that's why you always want to be, be cycling through your save slots, rather than just always using the save save slot. Because if you did that, you get here, realize you screwed up here, and you got to start over. You got to start over from scratch because you don't. You only, the only save slot is right up here. Um, okay. So, speaking of which, now that we're uh, at that point, now we're gonna do something in about two frames. There we go. See, you can only have. Now I know this because everyone knows this, but you can only have three bullets on the screen at a time as Mega Man X. Uh, so, as soon as that those first three collided with him, I wanted to shoot three more. So I, went, uh, I guessed the frames there, and we're going to do another quick save, because we want to shoot another shot, just like that. I actually, I actually just eyeballed that, um, but it was still accurate. One frame, that's when the actual collision hits. You can't shoot another one yet, but then the next frame, see? And now we can shoot three more shots. And we're going to get another one in. So the frame he gets hit, see that right there? The frame he got hit right there? The, the bullets are still on the screen, so if this frame, 1350, we actually shot again, we couldn't. But on 1351, when that bullet has gone now, you see it's now uh, collided into it, and see, now we can shoot again. So we're going to go ahead and precise our way up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And he's gone. But we've still fired three shots. And we're trying to be precise, aren't we? So unless there's an enemy right there, which, yeah, I didn't think there was. So we want to be precise. We only want to shoot exactly as many shots as is required to kill this enemy. So we're going to rewind and do that whole sequence over again. Now that we have a pretty uh, defined idea of what this is going to take. So let's get a city right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. Up. Oh. 
That was too, too many. I oh, looked wrong one. There we go. And we have now fired exactly as many shots required. Oh, we'll show it off, Black Salamander. We'll show it off. So that's exactly as many shots as required to kill that enemy. No excess. Again, precision, right? That's one of our goals. So we have successfully completed this whole section. I'm very happy with this, so we're going to do... Uh, I, I use F5 for my generic. Okay, this section's good. Uh, that That's my deep save states. You know, I only do an F5 save every now and again. The other save states are down here. Um, so, so we'll do the F5 save state. Now, uh, there's a lot of ways we can do... Whoops. <laughs> there's a lot of ways we can do a jump like this. So, I'm going to do something weird with our jump. Ready for this? Nope. Okay, too low. We're going to basically do a minimum power jump and try to show off as little. Oh, by the way, someone asked uh, if there's a possible to do all lore tasks. Uh, yeah, that is totally a thing. In fact, I actually have a task that I was working on that I have since abandoned uh, like that for FF6, which was, show which, uh, was designed to showcase 100% of the story of FF6 while still being a task. So uh, that was something, a very long-term project I was working on. Okay, so let's... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Eh, we might be able to try this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 frames. There we go. You see how we just barely clipped that? Because I know 12 frames we, we hit the edge, 14 frames we, we went over, 13 frames so is therefore it's pretty much perfect. So we have done like this perfect little precise hop. No excess, once again. We're not going to save yet though, because I'm not sure when the enemies are going to show up. And it's kind of RNG. Okay, so this is... Yeah, this is a problem. So we're going to have to go back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13. We're going to set a save at the 13 mark. And we're going to start charging our buster. Which sucks, because we have to waste that shot to charge, but whatever. Now, you see those two guys there? We want to release pretty much in a way so that it destroys them as they're entering the screen, which is going to be about 1, 5, 7, 5, looks like. So... One other thing to keep in mind is graphics are usually about a frame behind what the actual actions are. If you don't understand what I mean by that, if I hit... Legend of Zelda is one that this is very true on. If I hit uh, on frame 12, I hit attack, and then I let go, so I'm only attacking for one frame, you will not actually start the swing animation until thir frame 13 or 14. So this is true in other cases. For example, if you're charging up, it is possible to release that charge the frame it is actually charged, even though the graphic for it being charged has not loaded yet, because the graphics are usually one or two or three frames behind uh, where the actual the, the program is, if that makes any sense. So we're going to try and find, so for example, right, I'll demonstrate here really quick. There, right there, uh, frame 1570. Hey, Samurai. Is the frame at which we had the charge attack, but we could release it probably, I think, two frames before that. Well, speaking of which, okay, so that was way too, oh, there's a third one. Oh, that's some interesting RNG. Okay, so we have some unique RNG here we're going to have to compensate for. So we're going to go forward a bit. All of this is done at the frame level. Now, you notice we haven't released yet. So we're going to go and release now. Bam! All three. Now, that wasn't bad. Whoops, wrong one, wrong one. All right. Now we're going to do the backup save. We're going to start counting frames. We're going to release it at 71. Nope. Too early. Release it at 72. Nope. Too early. Release it at 73. Nope. Damn. 74. Wow. Release it at 78. Okay, 78 killed it, so let's go back then and do it at 77. 7 worked. Let's do 76. Nope. Okay, so it has to be frame 77. Bam! As soon as he enters the screen. So there we go. Again, getting that precise thing going across. 
Um, in case you haven't guessed, what we have so far is 1,600 frames of recording. Uh, divide that by 60, and that's how many seconds it is. In other words, not very many. Uh, I mentioned, I'm pausing here to mention this because tasking takes a while. Again, going back to my engineering and architectural uh, analogy earlier, you, you spend a long time on a task. But there is a fundamental difference in that between tasking and speedrunning because both are actually the same way. If you want to really speedrun, like really speedrun, you're going to be playing that game a lot. You're going to be spending tons of time on it, hours and hours and hours on it. The difference is when you, when you have put all of that as practice, and once you get all the practice in, then you actually play the game, and you know the, the actual run of the game maybe only be you know twenty minutes, but you actually spent you know hours and hours and hours and hours on those twenty minutes. By contrast, in a task, you spend all those hours and hours and hours as you're going through frame by frame. So the net result is still going to be this super quick you know this art, this art that you're creating, this this fun that you're having. But um, thirty two seconds, thank you. Yeah, and the, the chrono trigger test, see you around, Marley. The chrono trigger test, as as I mentioned, literally took me years. And that's working on it almost every day, too. That wasn't like just idly, oh, I'm just going to leave it alone for a few months. No, that took me forever because it was a seven-hour task. And seven hours in task time is ridiculous. But I, I digress. So, okay, so let's see what's going to come up next because the in Mega Man games, uh, that RNG table I mentioned will determine where the enemies are and, and uh, when they do actions, okay? There's actually a couple other things about this that I could explain. For example, um, there's, a, there's basically a programming line, for better, lack of a better term, on the far right side of the screen, and anytime anything interacts with, there's actually one on the right on the one on the top, excuse me, and anytime anything interacts with these lines, it will trigger stuff to happen. So for example, it is possible, even, even speedrunning wise, to literally skip bosses if you don't load the trigger, because if this, like the trigger for the boss is up here, and if you manage to get into the boss room without this line crossing it, which is possible, then you will not actually load the boss, and you'll just be able to skip them entirely. So being aware of those two things is uh, is another thing that's helpful for figuring out exactly how to go. So we're just, let's see what our RNG is. So we got these guys, we can just go under them, and we're going to have another guy in a second. Uh, let's get a backup save that I think we're going to have to skip. Uh, let's do another precise hop. Uh, last time it was 13 frames of hopping, but we're going down this time. So why don't we do, like, say, 8 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Perfect. That's actually really good. I like that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try and precise that a bit. In fact, we're going to go better. We're going to do something else, too. We're going to do something else uh, that I didn't show off last time. We're going to show off the last frame we can jump. So, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's try frame 20. Boom! Oh, yeah, that was perfect. So what I did there was I waited until the last frame until uh, that I was one okay so okay let me rewind Mega Man's hitbox is all over the place when it comes to collision but when it comes to actually interacting with the ground it's basically this one little line of pixels right and so I waited until that line of where it was considered me being on the edge was literally at the last pixel hit jump for a single frame and so we've got that precise little just to hop right down right so that actually worked out really well. I was just guessing on that uh, I probably shouldn't have made that save state. We still have the backup? Yeah, we still have the backup. Okay. So now there should be an enemy. Yep. Okay, so there's him. Now, I don't actually know if it's possible to jump over these guys. I know it's a very precise jump if it's possible at all. So why don't we go ahead and try to just eyeball it at frame 40. Oh, nice! Okay, so we managed it at frame 40. Let's try frame 41. Let's try to push the limit, guys. Always got to push it as far as it goes. Okay, so we managed frame 41. Let's try frame 42. There, okay, so yeah, you see how close it was to best getting hit. We were two frames off from being hit there. Again, to give you a bit of, of idea here, a frame is 1 60th of a second. So that's how precise we're being here. Okay, so at frame 41, we'll, get, we'll set up a backup save here. Uh, we're gonna jump for 13 frames. Oh no, more than 13 frames. Hang on. Sixteen frames. No, not sixteen frames. We may have to do a full jump. There we go, full jump. And shunk! There we go, right over that stuff. Oh, Deacon, that would be awesome. I would love to see a task of of Double My Cry. Actually, there are tasses in Smash, uh, and they look insane. 
I've I've seen ridiculously insane tasks in Smash, uh, specifically the GameCube one. Uh, the input is based on real world timing, Evil Knights, even if you got the fr uh, FPS off. Uh, that actually is an interesting co question. I'll go ahead and talk about what Evil Knights is mentioning here because this also has to do with lag frames. Uh, this is mostly true in older games, but this is also true in as, as recent as the PS2 era. Um, lag frames are when the when the actual em the the console the, the 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 computer the game whatever it is is lagging for a little bit and most often what happens during lag frames is it will drop inputs like you all of you've played Mega Man the old Mega Man right you know how in a Mega Man game like a bunch of enemies on the screen it'll just go uh, and kind of stall for a little bit those are lag frames those are very dangerous uh, when you're speed running and very irritating when you're tassing because while a lag frame is happening it accepts no input you can't do input because the, the, the console literally won't accept it. It's trying to catch up to everything that's going on on the screen. So even if you change the frames per second, all that's going to do is give you a colossal amount of lag frames where it's not actually accepting input. Um, so there's no real way to, to cheat that kind of a thing. Uh, so let's go ahead. Now there's going to be an enemy in a bit here, and we want to shoot him precisely. So, okay. Uh, we What was it? It's going to be 29 frames, so somewhere around 2100. We need to go, uh, looks like this one. I'm going to shoot up there. Uh, actually, no. I've changed my mind. Whoop, whoop. Now, you have to, be, you always have to be precise to the frame. There's no, like, just, uh, it'll work kind of a situation here. Okay, that's, that's not how that works. You always have to be precise in a task. Remember, at the very least, no matter what other considerations are, you're always trying to go as fast as possible. And, of course, we have a precision uh, priority on our thing. So let's set up a new save now that we've gotten over that hurdle. And at about 2100... That doesn't seem right. No, that, that seems about right. So we're just going to do it at 2090. How's that sound? We're just going to eyeball this. I'm going to set up a save over here. At 2090, we're going to start shooting again. Nope, that, that's the only two of them hit there. That's close, though. So, 2090. So, let's wait uh, three more frames. One, two, three. And at, tw at, excuse me, I meant to do that at 2093, not 2094. So, 2093, we're going to start shooting again. One, two, three. Nope, see, we're still not hitting him. So. I'm going to go ahead and push that out even further. So by about, that's going to be 2097. One, two, three. There we go. 2097 actually managed to get all three hits on him. So we're going to set up a save here. One, two, three. Then we walk for a bit. Oh, I forgot the second shot. One, two, three. There we go. Now, I know those are going to hit, so I'm going to go and set the save state now. This is actually a dangerous thing to do, um, relatively speaking. It's possible to screw up and just be like, ah, I just lost all that progress. And trust me, I've done that. But once you... For those of you not aware, I actually did a task of a game called Evo. I actually showed it off, too. Uh, you know, Story of Eden or Journey of Eden or whatever the heck it's called. It's a SNES game. It's actually a really good game, uh, despite being ridiculous. But I did that task specifically and deliberately so that I could learn tasking. It's a terrible task, and I only like showing off to show how terrible I am. But I did it so I could learn how to do this. Because once you've actually done it, once you have the experience of tasking, it it's actually becomes much smoother and much easier once you have the flow of it, once you have the method of it. Once you understand how tasking works, you can do a lot more things like I just did. Whereas before, you'd be like constantly being super careful and cautious because you might screw up all the time, right? If that makes any sense. So, speaking of which... Now, we're going to go ahead and wait for that one frame right there. That's the frame I want. And we already know these frames, so we're not even going to save. We're going to be super arrogant here. Oh, yes and no, Evil Knights. I, like I said earlier, I tend to bounce between my uh, my six primary saves um, and, and just kind of keep a mental track of where all those are. And then I have my big saves thing. Um, but most tassers also do programming tassing, in which case they have literally hundreds of saves. So, whatever. Uh... Okay, that didn't actually kill him. So we're gonna go ahead. 
Okay, that was too, too many. So, on this frame we need to attack once. And BAM! And he's dead. Again, very precise shot. Okay, so there's gonna be another enemy over there. I, I knew that was coming, but I'm just showcasing how this works. So we've done that. And now we're gonna go ahead and do a secondary save there, and we're gonna guess. At, I'm gonna say 15. Let's see how close we are. Nowhere near! That's because he doesn't show up until that frame. Uh, so that's actually really easy. At frame 2270, uh, excuse me, 2269, actually. Uh, where was, where, there we go, okay. 2269, that's our new frame. 2269, so we got nothing to do for a little bit here. Do, 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 do. I like to call these break periods where you're not really thinking about much, you're just setting up for the next big maneuver. They're right there. Okay, one, two, three. Let's see where we're right. Eh. We're like three frames too behind. So one, two, three. There we go. And again, we're just going to be arrogant. No, we're not. We're going to need to save there. Whoops. We were arrogant. We paid for it. Remember, every mistake has to be recovered. Oh, I see the problem. Now we're going to do something weird. One, two, three, four. We did that specifically to see how many more shots he takes. One, two, three, four. Bam, see? That's another way of uh, of figuring out exactly what you need for a given section. We're going to do a save up here. Now we're going to see what's up next. So if I'm not mistaken, we got a jump and a mini-boss. Yep, so let's go ahead and... Oh, wrong one. Occasionally I'll, I'll pull it into full-time just to see what's coming up so I have an idea. Like I just did. Although I actually know this game pretty well. <laughs> So I've kind of already done most of my mapping. So, okay, let's do that frame-perfect thing again, shall we? So we're going to set a finger. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so frame two, five, three, zero is when we've started falling. So in other words, we need to be going before that. Let's try jumping on frame 28. Nope, too late. There we go. So we can f jump on frame 27. And that's going to be a literally... This is... I've, for those of you who have watched me do anything with regards to speedrunning or commentating on other people's speedruns or whatever, you've heard me say of a frame trick, frame perfect trick and a per pixel perfect trick. What you're about to see is both. Uh, we have found the exact last pixel we can jump on, and we're going to be jumping at the exact last frame we can do so. Although pixel perfection usually is a little different thing. So this is more of a frame perfect trick than anything else. So we're going to jump... Okay, so now we're going to do a weird thing here, and we're going to count. One, two, three, four, five. Nope. Let's try one, two, three. Nope. One, two, three, four. Perfect. There you go. Another perfect. And again, if we do if we do three frames of jumping, we'll fall. You saw that, right? So if we so we four frames is the minimum amount of jump. So again, we have the very, very, very precise uh, jump. Once again. Now, I'd say this is good enough for a, a, a slot thing, because we're about to be fighting a mini-boss. So let's go ahead and... I'm not testing the whole thing, Evil Knights. God, no. Making my next test is... Ugh, that, that would take me days upon days. Um, now, remember I mentioned earlier the concept of, uh, of that line we have to cross to trigger stuff? Well, let me explain one of the things I mean by that. Here, watch this. So we go over here. And if I do this right... There. Okay, so you saw how the, it, there was a moment at which the screen transitioned, but you notice the enemy hasn't actually spawned. So, we actually haven't gone far enough to the right to actually spawn the enemy. Right? So, um... We have to go a little bit further to the right to actually spawn the enemy. Okay? So, for task purposes, 
we're going to have an actually pretty, pretty tricky task here because we want to try and shoot him the moment he shows up, but we determine when he shows up. So now it gets a little trickier, right? So let's set a save here. And we can't guess the frame, but we can do this. Get near. So that when he comes down, it hits him like that. Oh, oh, no, too far. Too, too, too late, too late. Also, grats, Omni. Okay, so we did that at frame 50 last time. So let's do it here this time. Nope, still too late. Or still too early, I should say. There we go. Okay, so one, two, three. See, now we're not hitting him at all. This kind of jump is actually really hard to set up properly. Yeah, you see how we just literally completely missed him there? That, that, I'm just doing that to kind of demonstrate what we're talking about. Hey, Coor. I'm just going to do something weird here. Okay, so. This is another example of where that uh, frame RNG thing comes in. Uh, depending on what that table is for the RNG will determine what attack this guy is going to use. He can use three attacks. He can spawn enemies, he can shoot missiles, and he can do the, the machine gun. Now, the machine gun is optimal for, for speedrunning here. Uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm not going to try and manipulate that. I'm trying too hard to, to hit him precisely. So we're going to focus on hitting him precisely and then just work with whatever RNG we get. So this is a specific example of ignoring the possibility of RNG manipulation, but it is possible to make the, the attack I'm about to do happen and then manipulate the RNG with, with the frames counted for that attack. I'm just not going to do it for the sake of this. Um, so uh, one, two, three, four, five... Okay, so we got the worst possible setup here. Hmm. I'm debating something. Ah, uh, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's do uh, this one. There we go. So we're going to do this jump again. As soon as he shows up, right? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, three. So what we're doing was kind of glitching him out, believe it or not. I'll demonstrate what I mean in just a moment. There we go, he's dead. So I took the hit deliberately. Okay, I should probably explain what I just did. Um, the whole point there was uh, it's possible to get by these things without uh, getting hit, but we're not going for that level of precision. Hey, War Vulcan. Um, we're not going for a no-hit run. Uh, there are There is such a challenge as a no-hit run. Uh, I actually showed that off in my Link to the Past uh, task. One of my goals was to show a Link that was so good, you know, in, in lore or whatever, that he literally never got hit. But... Um, the idea here, that's not one of our priorities. So I went ahead and took that hit because I knew I could actually go faster taking that hit. So because the bottom priority is always speed, taking the hit is actually faster. Make sense? I do that in speed run too. It's just harder to pull off on the speed run. Um, so the other thing I did is that enemy has a weird AI. Basically, as has like however much health, you know, 10 health or whatever, right? If you reduce that to zero, he can't actually die until he reaches a sufficient part to the left. So I hit him enough to kill him. 
got hit, moved through him while I was invulnerable, turned around, hit him once, and then he just went, Ugh, and, and then he fell over and died, uh, now that he had successfully gotten to the left far enough. So, um, actually, uh, do I have a save of me having just killed him? No, it looks like I don't. Shoot. Okay, so I gotta do that. I gotta do that whole thing all over again. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. It's okay, I know what I'm doing this time. Sixteen. 14, 14, 15. Oops, oops, oops. So then we take the hit. Jump through. Now we're going to do this as precise as possible. Turn around. Now, just to make this look cooler, instead of running away, we're just going to watch him fall. Just just for just for entertainment. That's why I did that whole section again, because I can make it look a little more entertaining here, by being like... Now... And then it looks like we started running to the right as soon as possible. So, just watch him fall, and then move to the right. Um... Oh, very nice. So, okay, we're going to do another one of these uh, hop things. Now, if we just walk off... See, that's not enough. We have to actually... I just wanted to demonstrate that we can't actually do that. So we got to find... we got to do one of these super precise jumps again. You may be like, God, we have to do this precise jump thing, frame counting thing, every jump. If you think that's bad, watch my Zelda task sometime. Um, in Zelda, for those of you not aware, like, this is the frame... This is where you can fit in, right? And Link can... If you, like, approach it two frame... Two pixels too far to the left, you will nudge and go in, right? But I had a goal of precision in my LTTP task, so I had to make sure I was always the exact same pixel so I slid right in perfectly without having to do the nudging thing, right? So imagine every single time I go up any staircase, or go in any door, or go between any two blocks in the entire LTTP task, I was doing the same thing as this. Every single time I had to pause and find that exact frame in order to move, in order to hit it precisely. Um, now, I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm just trying to explain what tassing really is. It's all about careful, methodical, you know, work like this, right? <sighs> Not yet, Takoya. This is the beginning of his career, remember. Uh, so let's get a backup save there. So we start falling off at 16. So why don't we do... Uh, whoops. A jump at 14. Or 15, excuse me. Nope. Okay. So let's do a jump at 13. Okay, so we're at the 13 mark. We're going to jump for two frames. Nope. Too little. Wow. Okay. What do you mean, Selder? Oops, wrong thing. One, two, three... There we go. Three frame jump. Perfect. Now, it, much faster, Evil Knights. Tassing will always be faster than a speedrun. It, it, that's just the truth of it. It is most impressive when speedrunners manage to get within you know a decent amount of time as the task. For example, uh, there's actually an Ocarina of Time any percent run out there speedrun, which is within like 30 seconds of the task. That's really, really impressive. But, um... But yeah, there is no there is no real possibility of of a speedrun surpassing a task because a speedrunner would literally have to be frame perfect if you follow, right? Uh, so let's get a backup save here because if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we got these guys. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, let's let's go back a bit. Um, I'm gonna try something that's probably not gonna work. So. It was three, three frames of jumping. One, two, three. And then we're going to shoot. The goal is to look entertaining, so The goal is to look cool. One, two, three. You don't necessarily need to follow these goals for doing it, of course. 
You can follow whatever goals you want. That's kind of the point. Six, seven, eight. Oh wow, he's he's not gonna render that quickly. Okay. So one, two, three. Yes, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna show the video so you guys see what this looks like live because I want you to appreciate like the, 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 that thing I was talking about. Like, you know, I have achieved it. I have accomplished it. Yes, you know. So. Um, Okay, so there's the exact frame we hit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm, looks... Hang on. Okay, so those take two shots to kill. Sorry, I had to figure out exactly how many shots to shoot here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Two shots. Kill him as soon as he shows up on the screen. Again, that precision thing. Um, I'm sorry, I'm doing a lot of the work here in my head. Again, I've tasked before. I've, I've tasked a lot. I actually hope to task in the future. Um, but figuring out all of the, you know, the, the precise frame. I was just, to tell you exactly what I was doing, I moved forward for five frames, jumped for four, shot, undid, shot, moved back down, instantly hit him and in, in like that. Right Now, I don't actually think that's going to uh, work out as well as I'd like. So why don't we go back to that? and do two frames. One, two, three, four. You notice we have a different uh, drop, by the way. That's because we have different inputs, so the RNG is different. I said yes, Evil Knights. I've said yes like five times. God, man. Um, so we could do that even better, I bet. What do, you, what do I get? We, we gotta push it. We gotta be as, fa as fast as possible. So one frame. One, two, three, four. Yes, Omni, but that's usually, uh, that, that, I, let me explain what I mean. <laughs> yes, but that just means whoever made the task wasn't being good enough, to be blunt. Anytime a speedrunner beats a task, it's because the task didn't try hard enough, really. I'm sorry, a task will always be superior if it is properly presented. That, that's the point. I mean, there's, there's different levels of quality in tasking, right? And not every task is trying to be as fast as possible, as I've already uh, just, just explained. So, um, like, for example, there are speedrunners out there that could beat the crap out of my Chrono Trigger time, even though mine's a task. But that's because I'm at level one, and it wasn't an optimal task, if I'm being honest. So much of my attention was on the, 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 the top priorities that there were several times I actually lost time in the Chrono Trigger task. And I'll admit that. You know, it's, that's why I haven't submitted that task, because they would look at it and say, well, you, you need to optimize this. And I would say, well, no, I'm not doing a seven-hour task again. But... Um, the, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, a, a optimally built task will always beat out an optimally built speedrun is what I'm trying to say. Um, the difference tends to, tends to depend on how good the speedrunners get, but there is no player out there who can be perfectly time, frame perfect like an emulator can. Uh, no, Sile Deer, I have changed my mind, <laughs> just for you. And Evil Knights just kind of repeated what I said there. That is true, Omni. My Chrono Trigger task really wasn't a speedrun in any real sense of the word. Speed was the bottom priority, but it, but it was still the bottom priority. Okay, so, um, yeah, thank you, Javin, for putting that in. <laughs> All things being equal, a task will always be superior. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Six. So we're going to do one. Two. Oops, I, I screwed that up. I screwed that up. Uh, where's the one with the shots in the air? There it is. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two. Oh, wow, too early. Okay, so he's going to show up a lot later than I thought he was. So we're going to go back here. Save this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And he's dead. Okay, so I need to count that out again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Let's go with 18. Let's see how precise we can get this. One, two, three, four. No, that was way too late. That was way too late. Okay, hang on. Where's the one where he exploded? You notice he's always dropping that little health. That's because our frame input for this section has always been the same. Uh, to kind of demonstrate what I mean by that, let's do this, and then shoot again, and then jump. Oh, hang on, I did it too late. 
shoot, and then jump, and then jump, and then just hit up, and then left. Okay, I didn't advance. I couldn't advance the RNG enough. But if if you do different input, you can change what that is. I, I was trying to demonstrate live, but whatever. You have to live with the other thing. Okay, so let's hit some back. See, you know, see, this is a good example of erasing my saves that screwed me up. Because now I got to go back and do this whole section again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, one, two. Uh, it's still too uh, early, so one, two, three, four, five, eight. Uh, it's still too early. We can do that better, guys. We can do better. Yes, Evil Knights, there are actually plenty of speedrunners who do live re RNG manipulation. Zelda games are a huge example of that, because Zelda RNG is so easy to manipulate. And, um... It, it, RNG manipulation doesn't always have to be frame perfect. Um, I, I mentioned Earthbound earlier. You can manipulate the RNG in Earthbound live without any issue because I already explained how to do it. Timing has nothing to do with anything. You just have to hit it in the right order and then... Psh, um, it's a lot harder to manipulate RNG in a game like Mega Man. In fact, it's virtually impossible for a speedrunner. I'm not saying it is impossible because I know speedrunners who do that. But it is much harder because you have to count your input in addition to where the X frame is, in addition to where the Y frame is, while at the same time ensuring that you're still playing the game well. And that is much, much harder to do uh, when you literally have a matter of frames, as opposed to, say, being able to manipulate the RNG of an RPG, which is turn-based, right? You, you know, you have more control over that, is what I'm trying to say. And X is definitely ripping out the energy of his enemies, because he's just evil like that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we've, we've got it. So now what we want to do is a very precise jump. So let's figure out the exact frame we hit this health. Right there. Okay, so. We're going to jump at frame 36. Which, which worked, actually, so. Let's try jumping at frame 37. Ah! Oh. Damn, okay. That was actually close. Okay, so let's go to frame 37 and then hold down for three more things. Oh, that was so close to being perfect. Okay, hang on. Damn! We're just, it just keeps hitting our back leg there, doesn't it? Five frame jump. There we go. It looks like we went way over that, but as you can see, that was literally... If, if we had held jump for one frame less, we would have gotten the health. So... We had to uh, we had to do that jump very, very precisely. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we have another bug battle. No, oh, God! Oh, best, best test ever. Okay, so, yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, you malik. And I know that Mega Man X is truly the most inferior droid ever, because my droids are infinitely superior, because I made them with uh, extra time I had on my lunch break at Burger King. Uh, anyways. Well, actually, and, and, and what Javan says is correct. The health bo the, the uh, hitbox on health pickups is really weird in Mega Man X. Um, the, the, the forward is, like, right where that pixel is, but the ladder is actually a bit out of it. Uh, and this is true for the larger ones, too. And so, if y you can sometimes get health pickups where it literally does not look like X is actually touching them because his graphic isn't, right? But, of course, X's own graphic varies, and given how much animation he has in this, you have to keep in mind his actual hitbox is more like this. So, it, it's really weird getting used to it, but anyways. Uh, okay. Now, uh, we gotta repeat this trick, okay? So let's, let's, get, let's get tricky, okay? Normally, if this was a pure speed task run, we would literally, in, to the frame, try to repeat what we did with the last bee with this, but why don't we try to kill this bee differently? Um, so what we're gonna try and do is instead of shooting it to death, turning around and just push, uh, we're gonna go ahead and see what our RNG is. Let's do that first. Let's see what our RNG is, see what we have to work with. It's gonna come down and shoot if we do just that. Hmm, so why don't we do... Okay. Three. 
too, too late, too late. Okay, so. So that was three frames. Let's do five frames. One, two, three, four, five. So you see, because we've been holding rights specifically, we know exactly where he's going to be. So we're going to do something really weird here. I've seen a task pull this off, so I know this is possible. Um, this is going to be actually kind of tricky, so bear with me here while I try to figure out how to make this work. Ah, shoot. I've hit the, I've hit the keyboard cap. Uh, hang on. Uh, I'm trying to think how to do this. Uh, okay. We'll do that, sure. Uh, hang on. We're going to do something weird here. This one. Um, for Okay, so I found out recently my keyboard isn't actually fully mechanical. Uh, which sucks, actually. B A Y X. Start select L R. So if I try to hit, it's only in certain sections. So if I try to hit these eight keys at once, which is what I was doing in order to do this maneuver, uh, it's not going to work. However, you can task with a controller, and I'll demonstrate here. So we're going to try and hold jump. Now this is this is why I don't like tasking because I'm going to be doing this, and I'm going to use my pinky to hit the frame advance. If that makes any sense. So uh, we're going to do, which is oh, this is going to be so weird. Hang on. So we need to hold right and jump. Yeah. Ugh, this is this is so mentally wrong. Uh, no, okay. One frame, one frame, one frame, one frame, one frame. Okay, so I need to jump and then be holding it. God, this is so hard to do. Okay, I actually screwed it up. Hang on. Uh, no, actually it doesn't, Javin. Like I said, I don't actually use an emulator designed for... Uh... Oh, actually, there's an idea. Hang on. Let me see if something works here. Uh, this, em emul this emulator is not actually designed for tassing. It's just an emulator that happens to allow tassing. My advice, Omni? Have fun with it. Play a scoundrel warrior and crush everything like Jongo was doing. Where's... Okay, hang on. Just a sec. Advance. Frame advance. Perfect. Okay, so I've actually bound frame advance to my controller, so we'll see if this works out. So I want to be... Uh, it looks like it's working. Okay, so we want to... Jump. Oh, shoot. I, I did that wrong. I did that wrong again. Hang on. This I'm not used to doing this on a controller. So we'll set up a save state there. We want to do this. And he's dead. What? No, that cannot be right. I totally did that right. Hang on, hang on. So. Ah, shoot, that's hard to do. Okay, hang on. Damn it, stop advancing two frames. Advance one frame. Let's do a in the middle of doing this save here. actually work how it should have. I'm not actually sure why. Oh, I see why! Okay, so he couldn't die while his attack animation was still going. So he was literally... Okay, hmm. We can accept that second hit. It is still faster to accept that second hit, in all honesty because of the vile fight. So why don't we go ahead and accept that second hit? 
Oops, oops, oops. God, that's hard to do on a controller. I do not like tasking on a controller. I know it's possible, I don't care. I'm proving that it's possible right now. So now we're going for a different type of precision. And I can find, I can get rid of the controller now. <laughs> God. Let's rewind everything back to the keyboard so I can get back to actually do, doing this properly. Alright, yeah, X. Yeah, bam. Okay, so. Oh, I need to rewind the frame advance too, don't I? One moment. Frame advance bound to this. Uh, okay, so that worked out a lot better. Uh, yep, okay, so. So this time we're going to deliberately not look. We're just going to watch. Yeah, cool guys don't look at explosions moment here. T, that was like a 10 second. I guess it went 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Still no. There we go. So now we're moving when the screen moves. Okay. So now we got to several precise jumps to get through. Oh my god. I hope this isn't too boring for you guys, but this is, this is a pretty good example of what tasting is like here. Ah. Okay, so let's find that frame. We're going to keep doing these precise jump things. One, two, three, four. Right there, so 44. Yep, I was right, I'm getting good at this. Okay, so after a while you get used to how many frames certain actions happen in. I mentioned this in my LTTP um, video. After a while you get used to how many frames certain things take and you and you can just be like, okay, well, this, this is gonna take five frames, this is gonna take 19 frames, this is gonna take six frames, you know, that kind of a thing. And so you get used to, you don't have to every single time count out the frames, you know, well, I gotta go back three frames and then you can just do it like I just did. And in fact, I'm doing right now. Let's do a 10 frame jump. Nope, nowhere near enough. Whoa! And, and that's it, that's the end of the task right there. No, I'm kidding. Of course, deaths mean nothing in a task. Uh, any deaths that happen are deliberate. So let's do a 13 frame jump, because that just keeps working with us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. Nope, that's a long jump, so we gotta do. There's 13 frames, so let's go to 14 frames. Nope. 15 frames. Nope. 1, 2, 3, 16 frames. There we go, 16 frame jump. Perfect. Okay. Now, I'd like to pull a precise jump on this guy rather than fight him, so. Just to be different. Again, entertainment, right? So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nope. Okay. Ah, it looks too clear. It, it looks like we're just jumping right over him. I don't look like we're barely jumping over him. Like that. That's a little better. But that's still not good enough. We can do better than that. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. Yeah, so that's, that's way too late, so... Let's do a single frame later. Let's do two frames later. Let's do three frames later. Let's do four frames later. Yeah, okay, so one, two, third frame. Now we're gonna do something weird here. Gonna do a really backup save. One, two, three. Oh, pff, what's wrong with the wrong thing? One, two, three. One, two, one, 
Okay, so we need to do... We need to hold jump for two more frames. That's as precise as we're going to make that. One frame less and we would have hit it. So that, that's as precise as we're going to make that jump. Yeah! So we need to, uh, we need, we want to try to do as little damages to the highway as possible. I actually do that normally, but it also makes it faster because it reduces the amount of lag frames we're going to be producing. So, uh, what we're going to try to do is something really weird. Nah, that's, that's, then we're not going to have the angle right, so screw it. We're not, we're going to just go ahead and destroy this chunk of highway. Nobody cares about this chunk of highway anyways. Forty-five. Uh, let's try thirteen jump uh, frame jump. Ooh. Thirteen frames. Oh wow. Oop, too early. 14 frames. Wow, that's a long jump. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15 frame jump. There we go. Okay, we made it. Yay. All those people don't matter, Takoda. Nobody cares about them. There's some kind of tea party people or something. Uh, politics! Uh, right, so. I'm just going to do another precise jump here. It's okay, we've kind of started to streamline these a little bit, because I can tell by the frame we're falling when we can jump. Which is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Ooh, wow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We'll do another 15 frame. No, nope. damn, that's a long freaking jump. Let's just do the full jump there. Yep, okay. Okay. Ah. Okay. We're going to do something weird here. I'm gonna go up to frame three, apparently. Nope. Another fifteen frame jump. No, wow. Fifteen. Too much. There we go. And we land on the edge without actually knocking over that thing. So again, as precise as possible. Um, now, we, we got a bit of a weird situation here. Uh, we, we could jump all the way to the right thing, but that'll cause both to fall, which will not only make more lag, but I mean, those poor people down below. So instead, we're going to do something weird. And this might not be possible based on the enemy positioning. Oops, too, too close. Okay, right here. One, two. Okay, so that was perfect. One, two. Uh, LTTP, honestly, Deutsch. You would... That game is actually very difficult to get precise because every single, every single pixel matters in every action. And there are certain circumstances where it was just insane. Can you get fully precise? Uh, okay, so we're going to do a 15 frame jump right now, basically. As soon as we touch ground there. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work. I, I, I didn't think that was going to work. Okay, so instead what we're going to do... Takes more than a shot, so... Oh, whoops. One, two... Oh, wow. Hang on. We're gonna make this work. One, two. One, two. Mm -hmm. 
damn. Hey, we're, we're too late with that one, so. One, two. Oh, whoops. One, two, space, one, two. Save state. Whoops. So we gotta figure out the exact frame we can jump. Which is right there, apparently. So, But we're not gonna be able to do it without knocking them both off anyways. Damn, so it looks like I can't do two. Let's try it, let's try it. Nope, okay, one, two, three. Nope, we can't do it. We cannot do what I wanna do. It's not possible. Okay, so what I was trying to do was trying to jump over this thing without knocking over either of the things. Because if you notice, if we jump early enough, like right here, we're not actually knocking over that thing, even though we've landed on it. But then we'll hit that third side. So if we do... If we try to precisely frame that, we're just going to hit that. And if we walk on it for too long, we'll knock it over like that. So there's no avoiding it. We'll just live with the one chunk falling. That's a shame. Sometimes you can't do what you want to do because the game literally won't support it. And and, and it is possible to do that with total control hacking, but let's not do that. Whole highway, die highway. No, um, that's not what I'm going to do. Yeah, what's up? I'm going to go get my nail fixed. Is here. Okay. Have fun. Okay. Have fun. Why don't you put the thing face the other direction? What thing? The... It, well, I don't want it to hit the wall, first of all. And second of all, the wheel's here, so... Pulling it out this way is going to be a lot easier. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, so we want to hit the middle highway section there. Which looks like we've almost aimed that perfectly just from guesswork, so... Yep, we did. That was actually really good timing. So, one, two... Nope. One, two, three. Perfect. And we immediately touch off. Now we gotta slide in here. Ah, oh, jeez, that's gonna be a tough job. Okay, so one, two, three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I, I agree, by the way. It, tassing is simply a... Like I said, there's no... Tassing is not better than speedrunning, and speedrunning is not better than tassing. It's the difference between painting and designing an in, and a building. We have room in our world for both, I swear. Okay, too, too early. Way too early. Where's my... There it is. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. If you think this is easy, Oman, feel free to go task some stuff. Because this is not easy. I'm doing the tutorial stage of Mega One X to demonstrate tasking. This is, this is, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Nope, five was not enough. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I thought. Okay. Ooh, close. So uh, another thing, real quick. Some people ask me, you know, did you did you task with the sound on? Absolutely. Now it's not as necessary for this section we're showing off here, but in basically every other task I've done, audio cues are extremely important. Congratulations, Omni! You are now person sixteen. Um, audio cues are very important. The exact frame in audio, like a tink or a pling, goes off is, is very, very helpful to figuring out the timing in some things. So, um, yeah, you, at least I have to task with the sound on. So you do get used to hearing the sound in... You know. We're just being... It's just for fun, Jamie. We're just trying to show off, really. Uh, so let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're counting, Omni. Every person who's been ringing it up, we're counting. That's all. It's nothing personal. One, two, three. Nope. One, two, three, four. Oops, too many. Perfect. So we're going to do another precise jump here. And 
at frame 40. Whoa, too far. Okay, so. That's a breakable block. Can we can we dodge? I don't think we can jump over that one. Yeah, that's not happening. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten frame jump. Nine frame jump would have dropped. We got a pretty big dead section here, so we'll get a backup save here. And another backup save. Hmm. What could we do for that? Um you know what, I've probably shown off enough, and, and the rest of this stage is really nothing to do. I think I've made my point. So why don't we show off... Uh, well, no, what do you guys think? Should we go ahead and go to the end of the stage? Or should we just cut it off here and, and see what it looks like? It's up to you guys. In, in, in the meantime, I'll try and count some frames here. And... Location. Because he's going to be right... There. At frame 63. Uh, oh man, see, the definition of perfect is debatable. <laughs> For example, I, I mentioned Mario Brothers 2. Uh, well, I, uh, you know, let's say I do a task of Mario Brothers 2, and I'm like, hey! And then you do a Mar task of Mario Brothers 2, and you find a slightly more efficient way to deal with a couple of things. So, congrats, you have, you have successfully beaten me by, like, three seconds. So your task has now beaten mine. And then I'm like, well, you could do that, but why don't you apply that to this? So I then have beaten your time by, like, ten frames. So now my task is quicker. And you'd be surprised how fast times can be broken in, in tasking as people discover new tricks and more optimal ways to, uh, to play the game. Um, it, it's often been said that, that there's never... There's literally... This is actually true. There's literally never been a task... That has actually been, you know, perf perfected. It keeps going down. Mega Man One is actually the single most uh, tasked game that exists, and even Mega Man One, they're still pushing the time down by a couple of frames every new iteration. And again, frames, but they're still doing it. They're still improving the time. They're still finding new ways to 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 be even more precise. Okay, so, and yeah, we're about a minute and a half into this. Uh, so, I forgot the frame. I was just counting. There, right there. So, uh, 63, 55, 45, 35, 86, 45. Theoretically, oh man, yes. But it has not happened yet. And TAS has been around for, for many, many years now. So, it has yet to have been accomplished. Ocarina of Time is another example of a game that just keeps getting pushed down in speedrunning and in tazzing, actually. So, 49. Uh, 20. So, destroy him the moment he shows up on screen. Yes, I have. Of course I have, Evil Knight. Or I guess I should say which, because there's been several. It's actually not dissimilar from the idea of solved games, for everybody who knows what that means. We still have, I mean, there are games out there that we have solved, but chess, for example, still to this day has not been solved. And, uh... That's kind of the same concept. It is theoretically possible at some point chess will be solved. At some point, it is theori theoretically possible we will reach the absolute limit of how to you know beat Mega Man and, and Super Mario Brothers two and all the other ones that have been super super test. Ocarina of Time is another big one, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? One day. Okay, so the next guy's gonna come up there. Mm, okay, we do something weird. Oh, that actually worked out really well. I was just guessing the timing, too. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two. 
Look at that. Look at that precision. Oh, yes! That looks so cool, and I don't even have to fit count the frames on that one. Ugh, more? Really? Damn it. Come on, guys. And we're going right under the power-ups. Ah, oh, damn, I finally screwed up. Okay, I knew it was going to happen at some point. Wow, oh man. I didn't actually know we were finished with checkers yet. Hmm. That's gonna be, okay, the angle of this guy is weird, so we're gonna go earlier. And just shoot him in the face. Oh, that's why, okay, I see what's happening. Five, six, seven, one, two, three, there we go. There we go, we're solved, we're good, we're good. Another precise jump at 49. 15. Oh, wow. Yeah, long jump. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. Hmm. So we completely obliterate that car. But then we're like, you know, these cars aren't really worth our time. One, two, three. One, two. We did that earlier, Darfo. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and that way the guy's looking over is like, oh my god, <laughs> you know, he just jumped right over me. Again, we're going for entertainment value here. So let me actually say something really quick that actually pisses me off personally. Uh, this doesn't. This hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, the last time I heard this was back when tassing was still a relatively new thing. But people will come up and say, well, why are you cheating? This isn't really a, a run. You're just cheating. You're using save states and stuff. You cheater. I just want to smack everyone who says that. Because that is such an ignorant opinion. It, it's like saying someone who uses a calculator while figuring out how to balance out the support struts of a bridge is cheating. That I, I don't even have words to explain how stupid that expression and that opinion is. And, and the last time I heard someone say that, I actually had to restrain myself from literally just... Because he was doing it in just an incredible smarmy... Oh, you're not actually doing anything. You're just cheating. Ugh, I can't even do it. I, I can't even make myself sound that freaking arrogant. Yeah, Kemic, we're, we're showing it off. We're going to show off the actual whole task pretty soon here. We're pretty close to the end of the stage. Uh, so that looks like a 15 frame jump. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. Possibly, oh man. But I, I, I've heard people say that in extremely arrogant ways before. One, two, three. Oh, he decided to come after us. Well... We're gonna do something weird here. I'm gonna turn left for a single frame. And then keep going right. And then one one, two, three, one, two. No, way higher than one, two, three. Man, he just he does not want to go over there, doesn't he? Yeah, so this is the one I want. So, turn around for one frame, jump for, uh, let's guess, six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. 
Mm, yeah, so one frame. One, two. Yeah, hang on. Wait, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we just leave him dangling there. And we're gonna go and do a jump over for this guy. Oh, yeah. Now, I agree with that, oh man. But that's also why, even among speedrunners, that's why we have different categories. Because, I mean, imagine an any percent Ocarina runner going against a 100% Ocarina runner, or a, you know, a no. A, a no uh, door of time skip versus a door of time skip runner and these two people who are all uh, who are both competing if they were actually competing for the same time that would be ridiculous because the person doing the skip or the person doing the end percent is, is, is effectively cheating at that point that's why we do categories that's why it's so important to say this is the exact type of run I'm doing so other people who are doing that same type of run can, can compare their times to you because otherwise the time comparison is meaningless right? you can't just say oh my Super Metroid time is blah because there's like 12 ways to play Super Metroid anyways um, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 nope yeah I didn't think that would be enough so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10 no, okay, he's going slower. That's why I want to. Okay, I think we're high enough. Yep, so one, two. One. One, two. Ah! And <laughs> we hear the explosion off camera. Of course, then he's going to come after us. And yeah, oh man, it's it's probably the same uh, mentality. Oh, I shouldn't even say it, but it is definitely the same mentality there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, no, we're going to have to keep going for this. One, two. two. Okay, now we got to be very precise. we got to find the exact frame that we can turn around without hitting the, the, the car. That was not it. Five. Okay, so one, two, one, two, three. There we go, and we just look at that right under him. So one, two, three, four. Oh, hang on, wrong one. One, two, three, four. Yes, I'm holding down jump for a different number of frames. I've, I actually don't know the maximum amount of frames you can hold down jump, but I know it's about 20. Um, and that's like the, your maximum height. And that and this actually gets really weird in games like Mario World where there's a run button too. Because you don't just have to vary your, your vertical height, but your horizontal height as well. And so speedrunning any Mario game is actually really, really insane. Four. So. No, too, too early. One, two, three. Cool guys, don't look at explosions. <laughs> okay, time to fight Vile. Look it up. There's very, very few sections of a task where you can just do what I'm doing right here. In fact, I went too far. There we go. Now, there's actually an exact location which is optimal to do this. Uh, so we're just going to see what our RNG is, because RNG can determine when this guy drops cars on us. So that one's behind us. That's not actually helpful. So let's go for a bit more, just just to vary this up a little bit. Let's go up to here. Hang on. Nope. One, two, three. Nope. One, two, three, four. Mm, one more frame. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now we're like in the middle of this platform. Again, precision. Just making it look better. You, most of the precise stuff, if you're doing it right, the players, the viewers should not even notice it. They should just, it should look better without them realizing it. It's like good sound design, as I often say. A really well-designed task. Most people won't realize how awesome it looks until they start thinking about it or it's pointed out to them. So, you know, the fact that we've standed, or exactly, again, it's that Zelda thing, you know, going right through all the things. Uh, but I digress. So, one, two... So 
So now, it'll be on our right, of course. Because we've altered the RNG. Oh, that would be terrible, oh man. Possible, and has happened. Okay, so now we know it's going to show up on the right. Let's check out the exact frame. <laughs> okay, that was almost perfect. Watch this. He's going to land on the shots. He even stalled on them. That's great. I love that. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many shots these things take to kill, so let's find out. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six more shots. Okay, so. And it's gone! Takoida, the best way I can explain making a task in those frame in that in that concept is imagine making an entire movie frame by frame. Really, a whole movie frame by frame. And you have to position all the characters yourself. You're doing it all. That's <laughs> yeah. And now he's gonna drop okay, he's gonna drop on our head. So if we turn around, let's see what happens here. Yeah, okay, so he's... We're, we're set up on the RNG for this one, so we gotta move. So we're gonna go to the middle of this platform. One, two, three, four, five. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Left. No, way too early. So in, in cutscenes you can usually play like this. In some games, in RPGs you can't play cutscenes in full time. You have to play them frame by frame. Why? Because you're mashing A, and you want to mash A as quickly as possible. Or in some cases you want to mash B, or in some cases you want to alternate buttons, because different RPGs have different ways to advance text. For example, Final Fantasy IX, every button inputs, and if you do it, if you like rotate between the four buttons, you'll actually go the go the text faster. So in a speed or in a task of FF9, you can't just mash A. You have to be Y. Or, or rather, square, space, triangle, space, circle, space, you know, uh, and just do this. So you have to do cutscenes in frame time. Um, speaking of someone who has tasked uh, games with cutscenes, <clears throat> Chrono Trigger, it can be a little bit bleh. So we want to get crushed as quickly as possible. Perfect. And here we go. We're just we're just gonna stand here for the rest of it. Now, okay, we could just accept that. We could call that that good, but why don't we try to make this cool looking? You want to make it cool looking? So we're gonna do uh, a couple of maneuvers. By the way, a friend of mine once was playing this on the SNES and actually had uh, ten is right at his face. Perfect. Um, ten frame jump is is gonna be enough to hit him in the face. Um, so. He he had a, a game genie on, and he had infinite health, and he just sat here and couldn't die to vile. And anyways, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, Kimmick, that is correct. Hmm, that's not gonna work. Take the hit. We immediately are on his tail. But it looks like 
We can't hit him, so we're gonna go over this way. We gotta get ready for our next attack. No. Oh, oh, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In the face again. Jump over the arm. I know this is making the fight slower, but that's not, again, that's not our top priority. We're trying to show off how amazing X is. And then he goes for the same move. Oh, but this time Vile was ready for him. Vile is the only one who could match us in terms of our targeting computer. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you, Vile. He got us! No! And movie over. We are officially, uh, movie overed. So, stop recording. Alright, guys, who wants to see our finished product? Anyone out there want to see the finished product? Anyone? Anyone hoiped to see a finished product? Anyone? Maybe. I'm actually pretty curious what this looks like, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, let's get rid of the frame counter. Cut! Print! That's a wrap. Anyone? Anyone? Oh, okay, Phil Good wants to see it. We have at least one person who wants to see it, so we go ahead and go to the movie. Um, there's a mode called read-only mode. Um, if you're just playing a movie, you want read-only mo mode on, uh, because you don't want to overwrite your film. Um, I'll demonstrate what I mean by that in just a second. Hey, little one. Okay, so... Hands up here, just to demonstrate. Okay, so... Finished product! Get hoiped, guys, get hoiped. This is it. This is it. Jump up the car. Destroy things before they even render in some cases. Super precise. Destroy things before they're even there. Hop down. Don't even feel like killing that guy. Kill that guy almost immediately. These guys, they, they, these guys just have no, there's no. These guys have no chance. X is just too good. X is too good. Look at this. And he's gone. Not gonna get that health. Health would just get in the way. Take the hit. Bam! Cool guys don't look at explosions. I'm loving these precise jumps. I actually like how that looks. Honestly. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those precise jumps. I'm loving that. This is going to look cool, I bet, right here. Not that, but what's about to happen. Right in the face. Right in the face as they come down. Excuse me. And the guy's like, wait a minute! And I'm like, ah, oh, here, let me just fix that for you. And he's gone. Cool guys don't look at explosions. Right on the middle. Just like I just said. I'm coming to get you! Oh, I'm, I'm prepared, better prepared than the other guy! And now our ultimate enemy, Vile. A.K.A. Baba, because I don't know why. In the face! Oh, he got us! It's okay, guys. We got this. We got this. We got oh no, no, we got this. Ah, oh, we're defeated. Ah, oh, even just the super precise hex could not defeat Vile. And we're done. That's the test. We just spent like an hour and a half working on. Yeah, hold my beer while I try this. But seriously, what do you think, guys? This this, this is live tassing, like I said. Um, <laughs> I've got one more thing to show off, just to demonstrate.
Um, so I mentioned uh, you want to do it in read-only mode. Well, some people are probably wondering, and I and this took me a little bit to figure out, figure out how actually you want, uh, like, how do you pause? How do you re-edit? Well, if you want to continue working on a movie, what you do is you turn off read-only mode. You start playing the movie. Okay, so we start playing the movie. Pause. Load state. And now we're recording. When you load a state while playing a movie, it sw and it's not in read-only mode, it switches to record. So now, if we wanted to continue this, this task, we could actually do that, because see, now we're recording still. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and uh, stop stop the movie right there. So uh, that's how you continue tasking, so you don't have to do it all in one session. <laughs> um, that is a good question. Oh, man. So anyways, this has been my little discussion of uh, tasking and, and speedrunning. When I say years, Kemic, I wasn't exaggerating. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the recording for our viewers at YouTube, so 